old. This is what they prophesied about. Go ahead. The prophets that have been before me and before the above prophesied both against many countries. They prophesied against many countries. There's no prophet that ever taught the word of the Lord in favor of any other country except Israel. No other prophet. How is it today you got people like TD Snakes, I mean Jake's, Crystal Dollar, out here prophesying for the health and well-being of America. They say bless your homes, bless your pockets, bless your finances. That is folly, foolishness. The prophets did not prophesy for that. They prophesied against many countries. Go ahead. And against great kingdoms. The greatest of kingdoms. Like I said, read up on Jesus Christ. He prophesied against the Roman government. And you know how much the white man treasures the Roman history. That's one of the first histories you learn when you're in the school system. Yeah, the letter J, all of that. But they prize that. Oh, Rome was one of the greatest kingdoms to ever rule. Well, Jesus Christ prophesied the downfall of that kingdom. That's right. Just like we prophesy against modern day Rome, America. We prophesy against this place because this place does our people foul. Go ahead and read. And against great kingdoms of war and of evil. He said, I talked about war and of evil. How is it that the prophets of today were the so-called prophets? Your pastors and your preachers, all they talk about is gain, monetary gain. They talk about having happiness and joy. How are you going to have that when you in hell, when you in slavery? Well, what do I got to do to make my people realize it? The Bible speaks for itself. There's not nothing else much more that I could do. It's either you get it or you don't. Who gets it? Who's ready to be on this corner teaching their people what it is they need to do in these last days? Oh, I appreciate you, brother. Thank you. I appreciate that, man. But it's a beautiful thing, though, because our people are truly getting themselves together in these last days. It's happening. But I promise you, we're not going to come into our full potential until we come under the umbrella of this law. That's the glue that holds everything together. If we kept this law, brothers wouldn't have to worry about putting bars in your windows for your homes. Because nobody would break into your home. You wouldn't need a car alarm because nobody would break into your car. You wouldn't need to be jealous about your woman asking her where she's at because she would be loyal to you. And there would be no man trying to take her away from you. If we kept the law. If we kept the law. Give me John 14 and 15. Y'all check this out. Y'all watch this. Because it's always that if factor when dealing with, the, uh, dealing with the Bible and dealing with our Father. We could be kings on this earth for real, for real. Not faking the fun. If we kept the commandments. Go ahead. The book of John chapter 14 and verse 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Hold on. What would you say, bro? I can't hear you. Yeah, I can't hear you, brother. Sorry, man. Come pull up and come, come holler at us, man. Let's talk. Because we are here for our people. We got to get that. John chapter 14. John chapter 14 and verse 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. You see that? And for everybody out here that say they love God, they love Jesus Christ, Christ said, if you love me, for real, for real, Keep my commandments. Love is an action. It's not just a word. You can't say you love your woman, but behind closed doors, you beating her. Women, you can't say you love your man. If we're not in his sight, you cheating on him. Love is an action. You cannot love God. You cannot love Christ unless you're keeping the commandments. Thus saith the Lord. Read it one more time. If ye love me, keep my commandments. It's that simple. Go to First John. It's that simple. That light work. It's that simple. What's the hesitation, my people? For everybody out here looking at me teach right now. What is the hesitation? 
Why are you so scared to submit yourself to God and keep these commandments? You submit yourself to your boss. He says show up at 7 o'clock. I bet you you be there at 7 o'clock working hard too. God said, I want you to show up on these street corners and teach your people. Where are you at though? Like I said, you value that dollar more than you value your God. And that's the same reason why we're living in these cursed conditions. It's the same reasons why you got to be out here flexing. Because you ain't got it. And anytime you get something a little bit, you feel like you got to flex it. When you win it, you ain't got to flex. It's already understood. That's a fact. We losing right now. That's why you flexing, looking like you're trying to be something. You ain't got to fake the fuck to us. I know you ain't got it. I ain't got it. I be seeing brothers, they living in a rundown apartment, driving a Maserati. Damn, do you look dumb. You look like an asshole. Excuse my language, I gotta be frank with my people. Bring it out, huh? That wouldn't feel me if I was out here on some. Come on now. I gotta be real with y'all. Bring it out. Our people out here faking. And you ain't even gotta fake because the Bible been called you out. The Bible been exposed you. Check this out. Go to uh, go to the book of Revelation. Chapter 2. The Bible been called it out. We're exposed. We ain't got it like that, y'all. But I can guarantee you one thing. You know what we do got? We got a whole lot of spirit. And that's something the other nations can't say they got. I'd rather have a million uh, 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 points in the scripture than have a million points here in this earth. Go ahead and read this. The book of Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9. I know thy works. God said he knows your works, black man. He know how hard you working. Latinos, he know damn well how hard you working. Read. And tribulations. And he knows all the hell and the BS that we have to go through here in this earth. Read. And poverty. Oh, snap. There it go. God, God said he knows your poverty. Why are we out here trying to flex? Why are we trying to fake it? I know you broke. You know I'm broke. We know we broke. It's okay. God said we are in poverty. But guess what? Thou art rich. Read it again. I know thy works and tribulation uh -huh. and poverty. But thou art rich. God said even though you don't have it all monetarily, your pockets might not be as deep as you would like it. He said you got spirit. You're rich in spirit. This is why we come out here and show our people because we walk around with our heads down, discomforted, low self-esteem. There's no reason for low self-esteem when you're a real child of God, an Israelite. There's no reason for it. He said your pockets is broke, but your spirit is balling. You are rich in spirit. Read. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews. Now check this out. God also knows the blasphemy. The blatant lies, the disrespectful lies of those that say they're Jews. The Bible just got done saying the real Jews are in poverty. How is the Jewish people the real Jews if they rich? Come on, y'all. Don't tell me we that slow. Our people know how to spot fake Jordans from a mile away. You got a fake Gucci belt on, I can see it a mile away. But you telling me you can't spot, you can't spot a fake Jew? Let him know, huh? Come on, y'all. How you doing, sister? We got to get it together. Go to uh, chapter 3 and verse 9. And this is what I was talking about earlier. There's literally people walking around this earth right now claiming to be us. But God exposed them already. They are exposed. It's our job to teach our people now so we can truly walk around and take what's ours. Go ahead. The book of Revelation, chapter 3 and verse 9. Uh -huh. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, uh -huh. which say they are Jews. Now listen, God said all those that say they are Jews, but they really not, he made them the synagogue of Satan, brother. 